Ngayong binabalot tayo ng dilim at pangamba. Sabay-sabay ang pagkatok ng mga tanong na. Kaya pa ba? Saan ba tayo pupunta? May pag-asa pa ba? Sa gitna ng lahat ng agam-agam, may mga bagay tayong muling natuklasan. Wala pa lang pagsubok ang makakatalo sa tatag ng ating nagkakaisang puso. Nananalig? Nagmamalasakit? Nagbabayanihan? Nagmamahal? <laughs> sa bayan? Sa kalikasan? Sa kalusugan? Sa pamilya? At sa kapwa? Kaya anumang pagsubok ang kakaharapin? Umasang may magandang bukas para sa atin. At pagkatapos ng lahat ng ito, sama-sama tayong tatayo. Sama tayong tatayo. Sabi nga natin, ang trabaho ng isang guru, this is the only profession na magnanakaw ka ng gamit mo sa bahay para dalhin sa eskwelahan. Mabot ako sa puntong yung computer unit sa bahay, saka ka na mag-computer, kailangan ko sa klase. So in this time of pandemic, I am pretty sure that most of us teachers are facing a lot of problems and difficulties in the preparation of the coming opening of classes. We are required to produce modules, worksheets, activity sheets, and even attend sometimes overlapping schedule of webinars. At first, I felt so anxious and distressed considering the safety of my family and the future of my career as a teacher. We've experienced an unplanned shift in our way of life. I even experienced personally burning the midnight candles just to master the Zoom and the Edmodo application in teaching. Yes, there are lots of challenges like financial crisis, work adjustment, living in confusion and anxiety, plus the thought on how to become an effective teacher in this new normal, especially those who are assigned in the remote areas in which interconnection is not possible. First and foremost, I always do believe in the saying, you cannot give what you do not have. Thus, the first thing I did is focusing on my own well-being, my very own self. Being mindful with myself will cascade to my surroundings, to the current situation we're in, great crisis is happening. As a Filipino teacher, the support I get from my family, friends, fellow teachers, and school administration has helped me cope with the challenges brought by this global pandemic. Being positive that this pandemic will end soon has afforded me to see life in a different and better perspective. It's just a matter of commitment, dedication, and hard work and the passion to be of service.
Okay, good afternoon, Paul, once again. Um, hi, and I, we hope that you are all well, especially to our educators who have joined us in today's discussion. Um, if you have any uh, questions right now as we wait for um, up improvements in our uh, broadcast today, please feel free. Um, Isa, how are you? How have you been doing this pandemic? Yeah, as I said, uh, being part of the Philippine Mental Health Association, we've been helping a lot of people who are affected by this pandemic. No? And part of those are uh, the general public, which would include itong mga teachers natin, mm -hmm. yung mga, yung mga anxiety, depression, they can come to us and ask us for help. May online help kami. Siguro maganda rin malaman natin saan magaling yung mga teachers natin ngayon from what region and uh, oh, for, para we can know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yan, meron tayong Region 7. We have uh, Region 7. Region 7. It's Negros Oriental? Tama po ba? Can I have, I will just, ito na. Mga teachers sa mga kaharap Region natin. 7 is okay. one of the areas na may, mm -hmm. ayan, may STO pa. Say. We have from Cebu. Kamusta kayo dyan sa Cebu? Di ba medyo hardly hit din sila ng COVID-19 dyan. So stay safe po ah. Yes, yeah, stay safe po sa ating lahat. Mayong buntag, mm -hmm. mayong... Uh, Adlao, we also Actually, have teachers from Tagbilaran City and Tugete yeah, so City. To the Visayan region. Yan, yeah, may maya yung mga questions nila niyan, yung mga specific signs and symptoms, masasagot natin yan in our interaction later. Tapula po CP Division. Kasi ako noon nung nagka-postpartum depression ako, parang alam mo yung pinaghandaan ko siya pero hindi ko talaga akalain na mahihit ako. Hindi ko akalain yeah. na. Kasi feeling ko nag-prepare ako, alam, basa ako ng madaming books, alam mo yun. Yeah. I really prepared myself emotionally but sometimes these mental health issues, they just really strike you blind. Yeah. And um, thankfully... Yan. I had a group of, uh, of, of friends na who encouraged me to, to get out of the house. Uh, your baby is not your world. May, may mga ganun sila mga advice. And uh, with also with the help of my husband, naka, nakahango naman mm -hmm. kahit sa, sa tulong ng, ng yeah, Panginoon. Pero kamusta po kaya yung important. mga important is Ms. Rowlin? Yes, uh, very important sorry. yung support na. No? Um, yun lagi nang sinasabi namin eh. you can never really say na hindi ka tatamaan ng mental health mm -hmm. problem True. no one is uh, actually spared from it spared actually. Yeah. Right yes. mm -hmm. good afternoon Dr. Raiko good afternoon Siti um, yeah you were saying about the support support system is very important no? especially for those who have mental health issues talagang mas maganda yung nagiging um, treatment, intervention, kapag uh, nandyan yung strong yung support system. So, I'm, I'm happy to hear that uh, your support system is very strong. Pero paano po kaya ang ating mga teachers ngayon? Ano? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so, kaya talagang importante, palakasin natin muna yung kanilang sariling resiliency. Eh, no? mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to to discuss no? siguro a little later on. Mm -hmm. Yung kanilang ano, coping. Oo. Actually, they... magandang mapakinggan sa kanila mismo galing how they cope. Kasi uh, well, no, yeah. coping is different for every person. Eh. So yes. it's important that we also hear their experiences. No? So what what is the coping of another person? Kunwari, ikaw ganito ginawa mo. The other person may do the same, pero hindi pareho ng effect. No? So yeah, see, I, I think yeah. si Miss Rowling ata ay teacher, di ba? So baka we can ask her also. Oo oh, nga, no? Hi, Miss Rowling. Good afternoon, Miss Rowling. Ayan. Hello, po. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, po. Hi, po, Doc. 
Good afternoon, Hi. Miss City, Ma'am Isa. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Miss Rowan, how are you? I'm I'm doing good. Thank God. Um, eto surviving <laughs> yeah. and yeah um doing the hustle sa ano sa school yung mga requirements ganun so, nag start na yung happy. nag start ba? na yung learning sessions ba sa school ay hindi pa po it will be starting on August 24 pa po Talagang but the department 24. of education oh po, the department yeah. of education as of the moment is preparing po for the opening of classes so i heard mm-hmm. that piloting na kayo parang ganun sinasabi yes, ko last night right yes piloting, po you know Opo, meron ng ganun and then nagko-QA na rin po ng mga modules especially okay. in the division of negros oriental So these are only some of the steps that we are doing para mm-hmm. maging prepared talaga for August 24. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But kamusta po kayo Miss Rolette nung biglang nag-lockdown? Yeah. Biglang nag-quarantine. Kamusta po yung adjustment niyo and and your fellow teachers? Um personally po, uh, I would say na okay naman uh, for me kasi ano um I'm I'm not really used to going out ganon. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. I only go out uh, para uh, pupunta sa school ganon, um, pupunta sa city <laughs> sa Duwagate City <laughs> ganon. But um I believe uh, some of the teachers there are a lot of teachers also na meron din silang mga personal struggles nila. So, yeah. I will be sharing later kung mm-hmm. ano yung mga internal yeah. struggles nila. And yeah. oftentimes kasi hindi nila na express yung mga struggles mm-hmm. nila kasi they are expected to be the strong yes. kind of people mm-hmm. kasi mm-hmm. the students are really dependent on them yes. and also yes. the community at some point. So, Yun, um I've tried to ask some of my teacher friends about their struggles and later on I will be sharing some of it sa inyo po. Mm-hmm. Siguro yes. later masasagot din ni Dr. Raiko kung paano nila yun, ano, no, you overcome well, all those mm-hmm. struggles, those things. Mm-hmm. And sa atin pong mga teachers, uh, please feel free to ask questions or to share stories. Mm-hmm. Um lahat po yan ay welcome, lahat po yan ay pakikinggan mm-hmm. natin ngayon. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. It will be very enriching to know your experiences too, no? Kasi sa usapang mental health, masabi natin, kaming mga tinatawag na uh, experts, no? Yung we can give advice, we can give uh, suggestions based on researches, but the situation now is different, you know? Uh, this is... Um, unprecedented no sabi nga this is something new for all of us so the stress it's coming from all over minsan yung iniisip mo na kala mo kaya mo pala hindi mo pala kaya or yung akala mo yes. hindi mo makakaya kaya mo naman pala di ba yeah. so these are the things that uh, we're actually in our online support yung PMHA online support dahil nawalan nga ng face to face na um uh, consultations and dami naming mga bagong concerns no na natututunan din at uh, makikita mo rin ang mga Pilipino talagang very resilient no uh, they seek for help but actually they already have um things no that they are doing to to address mm-hmm. the the concerns pero it's important pa rin pala pa rin talaga that we're having these kinds of conversations because, you know, we learn from each other. Pag tinignan natin yung stats ng mga nagsisig sa atin ng online support, no? More yeah. Yeti, anxiety talaga yung kanilang naging concern. Yes. And yes, I think yes. kahit yung mga right. teachers natin ngayon, isa yan sa mga concerns nila. Right. Mm-hmm. I think yung parang yung the people that we perceive to be the strongest or that we expect to be the strongest, yeah. parang sila talaga yeah. yung ma mabigat kumbaga yung cruz na pinapasana dapat actually na, dapat tinatanong na sila okay. yes 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 sila yung tinatanong natin how are you siguro kahit si Sir RD pwede nating tanungin ano as an right. regional director ano naman yung mga concerns nila sa yes. sa ano sa level sa nila kasi sa mga teachers level meron yan pero i'm sure mataas din ng pressure from the regional directors level. So, nandito na ata si Sir R.D., ano? 
Uh, pwede siyang i-join sa atin, sir. Ano bang mga mm-hmm. concerns niyo dyan sa region? Okay po, uh, Ms. Aisa at Ms. City, uh, pleasant afternoon and to all. No? Uh, yeah. Magandang hapon po. Or, uh, hey, sir, good day sir. to all. Oo. Ang gaganda ng mga ano, no? Uh, parang wala talagang stress. Wala <laughs> 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 ah. mga ito. Actually, uh, sabi ko, if I do not have a God and a family, oh, it's a bad right. motive. Right. Goro, I'm already uh, breaking down. Yeah. Uh, just like uh, today, I have a uh, uh, conflict of <laughs> schedules. So mm-hmm. while having a, a national man come, which is an emergency meeting, and then we right. are here with this. Now, if you do not have the uh, strong support mechanism, possibly, uh, yun, magbe-breakdown ka talaga. But uh, yun, uh, one of my secrets is uh, clinging to God. And uh, mm-hmm. what I'm doing is always for the glory of God and mm-hmm. also uh, for my family as mm-hmm. well. So... I'm sure they're yeah. always there for me, and uh, that's it. So, mm-hmm. smile pa din. Yes. So, in the region 7, <laughs> I'm coming to lahat eh. <laughs> uh, so, Gary, Ms. Haisa, let's, uh, let's introduce go. our panel. Okay. Um, yeah. si our, so, our first speaker for today is Dr. Carolina uh, Uno Raiko, the National Executive Director of the Philippine Mental Health Association an organization dedicated to address and promote mental health discussions and prevention of mental disorders. Uh, Dr. Raiko earned her doctorate degree in clinical psychology from the University of Santo Tomas. She is a licensed clinical psychologist and guidance counselor and was a former senior lecturer at the University of the Philippines. With her passion for mental health, she became the program manager of the PMHI AI Education Advocacy and Research Department for the last eight years. Ayan po si Doctora Carolina, Dr. Carolina Raiko. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Raiko. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're really very happy, no? Thank you for this opportunity to further our organization's uh, advocacy for mental health. Um, I am very happy that we have finally started this uh, partnership with GLOBE. No? Uh, in fact, during the initial stages uh, of the preparation for this activity, um, we were really very excited uh, because we know that uh, GLOBE is a formidable partner no? uh, in mental health given its track record of supporting organizations. Uh, mental health organizations in the country. And I am particularly grateful that uh, Deaf Ed Region 7 has been chosen, no? specifically chosen, because two of our PMHA chapters are actually located in Region 7. Yung PMHA Dumaguete and PMHA Cebu. They're uh, actually in partnership with that. And I think last week or two weeks ago, our uh, Cebu chapter conducted a psychological first aid seminar no, or webinar for, for teachers also. So again, thank you very much for making us a part of this program and um, for putting mental health no, at the forefront of uh, relevant and meaningful conversations uh, in mental health in the country. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Carolina, uh, hello po ulit at uh, magandang hapon po ulit sa ating pong mga guru that who are joining us today. In Thank discussion. you. Then, uh, once again, hashtag start a new day. And uh, let me reintroduce uh, Dr. Carolina Raiko, our first panelist for today for the benefit of all who have just joined us. Dr. Carolina Uno Raiko is the National Executive Director of the Philippine Mental Health Association an organization dedicated to address and promote mental health discussions and prevention of mental disorders. Dr. Raiko earned her doctorate degree in clinical psychology from the University of Santo Tomas. She is a licensed clinical psychologist and guidance counselor and was a former senior lecturer at the University of the Philippines. With her passion for mental health, she became the program manager of the PMHAI, Education, Advocacy, and Research de- Department for the last eight years. Once again, welcome to Hashtag Start a New Day, Dr. Carolina Raiko. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, 
So our next panelist uh, is Dr. Celestiano Jimenez. He is currently Director 3 and Officer in Charge of the Office of the Regional Director of the Department of Education in Region 7 from July 1, 2019 up to the present. DepEd Region 7 has also been identified as the Innovation Regional Office. Following four years of service as school's division superintendent of the Negros Oriental, he became the OIC Assistant Regional Director of Negros Island Region or the NIR. And a year after, he was transferred back to Region 7 as Assistant Regional Director be before being the concurrent OIC Regional Director. So let's welcome R.D. Jimenez. Good afternoon, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Aisa and Ms. Siti and to all. No? So first, I would like to uh, thank and praise God for allowing this day to happen and for you all to be instruments of His help for Region 7, especially the Department of Education Region 7. Actually, this happened uh, because of the partnership with GLOBE, the GFS, and Inquirer. So I'm also thankful to them uh, because uh, we really need this uh, as I see it. And I observed uh, from our uh, personnel, both the teaching and non-teaching personnel. That's why I really requested that this will be the first, uh, the first uh, episode, the mental health uh, uh, advocacy, you know, on our orientation, also on our teachers and non-teaching personnel, because it is uh, our desire in uh, DepEd Region Seven uh, to always prioritize the welfare and uh, well-being of our uh, personnel, both teaching and non-teaching personnel because Deep Ed Region 7 cares for everyone. So with that, again, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity afforded to us and for the partnership. I hope that uh, it will be uh, the first, but uh, this is not just the first, but there will be more to come. So once again, thank you very much. And to all the viewers, to all the uh, who, are, uh, who are watching and joining us in this uh, webinars, well, webinar again. Uh, thank you and congratulations because I'm sure you will be enlightened and you will be possibly relieved of the, uh, the cobwebs that you have in mind in relation to mental health. So once again, thank you and God bless everyone. Maraming maraming salamat po, Sal, Dr. Sal. Ramdam na ramdam ko po yung talagang pagkalinga nyo para sa inyong mga guru sa, re sa rehiyo din nyo. Thank you so much once again for joining us today. And our last speaker for today is Ms. Roland Jane Prahenog Katanos Gantalao. She is an elementary school teacher three at Zamboanguita Central Elementary School of Zamboanguita, Negros Oriental. Currently, she is an English school paper advisor and layout artist at the Zambolite, the official school publication of ZCES. Writing also became her launching pad in expanding her service in the Department of Education to the national level. She is a writer at the Voyager, the official publication of the Division of Negros Oriental. Moreover, she is a contributor to GASA, the official magazine of DepEd, Region 7, and was a columnist for two years in Times Focus, a local newspaper in Dumaguete City. Aside from writing, teaching English classes in grades 5 and 6, and running the school library, she also has hosting stints in district, division, regional, and national events. Together with three others, she hosts the Tala Serie, a division-initiated virtual magazine show which aims to inform the teachers in the field, as well as the parents, students, and stakeholders about the developments and updates in the Division of Negros Oriental. Welcome, Ms. Rolin. Hello po, good afternoon to everyone and welcome po sa lahat ng mga viewers natin ngayong hapon. So to all the teachers, to all the administrators, to all the superintendents and supervisors, maayong hapon, kaninyong tanan. And I am Teacher Rolin Jane and I am very happy to be here with you this afternoon. So I am very excited to share the experiences of my friends and my colleagues in the Department of Education this afternoon. Um, perhaps a lot of people or there are some people who might think that um, we are doing well, we are living the best of our lives because we are having this work from home set up. But um, 
we are also having our own concerns. We also have our own set of fears and anxieties. So these are problems that probably the outside world are not really aware of. So apart from being classroom teachers, um, we are also uh, wives, we are also then, huh? mothers, we are also sisters, we are daughters, we are fathers, we are husbands, brothers and sons. So we have roles and responsibilities po sa family namin, sa mga friends namin and sa fellow men. Kaya like everyone else, we also need help. Kaya po this afternoon, we are very grateful to have this particular platform wherein um, issues and concerns regarding our mental health can be addressed. So I'm also very excited kung ano yung magiging discussion this afternoon. And I am urging everyone who are watching right now to really stay tuned until the end of the program because I believe that we will be gleaning or getting a lot of substantial information ngayong hapon. So, yun po. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rowling. We're really happy to have you part of our panel today. And uh, I Isa, would you do the honors? Yes. Okay, so before we dive in to give positivity naman sa afternoon na to, I want to remind everyone to join Globe's Hope Bank and share messages of hope and inspiration. Simply, they just have to share, they have to search for Hope Bank here on Facebook to be part of the community. And we're putting the link on the comment section as well. Everyone is welcome to join and is encouraged to share their thoughts and messages of hope and light for the whole community in the forms of photos, artworks, quotes, songs, or videos. Please feel free to send in your questions on the comment section and we will open the discussion to address your pressing questions. Okay, so I think now it's time for the final discussion with our speakers. We're uh, ready, siguro, no? Siguro the first thing that we have to uh, talk about is, uh, can we ask Dr. Raiko if to discuss, ano ba yung mental health po? Ano pa yung mental disorders? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Isa, again for uh, for that introduction. No? Okay, so the first thing, the first information asked of me was to differentiate no, between mental health and mental disorders. So, uh, I'm sharing my slides with you. I hope that uh, you're seeing it. No? So what is mental health? Well, there are four hallmarks now, characteristics of uh, a mentally healthy person. Mental health, it's a state of well-being wherein one realizes his or her own potential. Uh, that would mean that uh, we're aware no, of what our strengths are, what our limitations are. So it's our self-awareness. It's uh, the image of ourselves no, um, that is supposed to be positive because we know which ones we, we need need to improve on uh, and which ones are our strengths. And then the other thing is that we can cope with the normal stresses of life. Operative word, normal stresses of life. What's happening now is actually not normal. So resiliency in, in the normal stresses of life, uh, it's, it's uh, the characteristic of a mentally healthy person. So later on, we will tackle more about the, the current pandemic. No? Pero yun nga, sa ngayon, uh, ang karakteristik ng tao na mentally healthy, the resiliency is there, no? And can work productively and fruitfully. When we say productively and fruitfully, it's not just um, um, just an output per se, no? But it's supposed to be something that is uh, that the person feels good about, no? creative and, and productive, and can contribute to the community. So not just for himself or herself, but there's another purpose. There's a bigger purpose to what the person is doing. So that's that's mental health. Now, for mental disorder, next slide, please, uh, to differentiate it from mental disorder. Uh, mental disorder is a condition, no? any condition that affects a person's thought processes. Uh, what are thought processes? Yeah, reasoning, remembering, imagining, problem solving, yan yung thought processes. No? Yung taong may mental disorder, nahihirapan dyan or uh, uh, yung makikita natin, yung cognit cognitive processes niya, no? medyo nalilito siya, uh, hindi masyadong makaalala, yan. And then the perception of reality is also affected. What do we mean by this? 
perception of reality is how we interpret what's happening around us, no? Percep our understanding of situations or circumstances that we find ourselves in. So probably we see some people who, um, uh, for instance, no, may dalawang taong nag-uusap, iniisip niya kaagad siya pinag-uusapan. That's uh, parang uh, mali yung interpretation niya dun sa reality. So that's just an example, no? And then emotions, no? Emotions are affected too. So it's either inappropriate yung emotions or there's lack or absence of emotions, no? And judgment. So even in the littlest things, you know, the person finds himself or herself having difficulty making judgments or decisions. So yun yung mental health and mental disorder. Why do we differentiate that? Um, madalas kasi kahit kami, no? Sa advocacy namin, naririnig namin yung mga tao, um, when they talk about mental health, they actually describe people who have mental disorder. Eh, may mental health kasi yan eh. Eh, gan parang ganun. So, parang nagiging um, mali yung konsepto ng mga tao. Mental health is actually something that is positive. Now, can we go to the next slide? There are causes of mental disorders. Now, a lot of factors actually, no? Uh, it's an interplay of a number of factors, but these are the more, most common ones, no? Biology, meaning to say, uh, we are composed of different neurotransmitters, no? Chemicals in the brain, uh, in, in our body. So, for, for people who have uh, mental disorders, certain kinds of mental disorders, they've been found to either have an oversupply or an undersupply of certain neurotransmitters in the brain. Uh, genetics is also uh, a, um, a, a factor, no? Uh, what do we mean by genetics? Uh, it's hereditary, namamana, kumbaga. So, totoo po yun, no? Maraming, uh, there are many conditions, in fact, that uh, um, when... Uh, we ask the history, you would see that, you know, a, a parent or a, a parang a, an earlier generation has that kind of disorder too. Okay? So life events, extreme life events also tend to trigger, no, uh, certain kinds of mental disorders in, in some people, no? So, uh, yung iba pag pinagsama-sama mo ito, mas nagiging, um, prone sila, no, vulnerable to different mental health concerns. Okay, so just like what I was saying earlier, can we go to the next slide? Um, just to emphasize, mental health is a positive concept, while mental disorders are conditions that need treatment, okay? Okay, so in terms of statistics, um, alam nyo ba that uh, actually one in five people, no? generally speaking, one in five people, can we go on to the next slide, please? One in five people is actually affected by a mental health problem. So, ilan tayo na nandito ngayon? Nakalagay dito 74. Pagpalagay mo ng 70. So, that's uh, 20%, no? Ilan yung 20% yung, um, ng 70? Around 14, probably. Tama ba ako? Tama ba yung math ko? Psychologist po ko, hindi ako magaling sa math. <laughs> Pero, yeah, divided by 14, uh, 14. So, around 14. Oh, 14.8. Pagpalagay, 15. Okay. okay. Ngayon lang ako tumama. Galing. Galing, galing. So, yun. Parang around, yeah, around 14 of us has a, a, a mental, oh, mental health problem. Okay. When we say mental health problem naman kasi, it doesn't necessarily mean agad na yun talagang full-blown mental disorder. So, any one of us no, can actually develop a, a mental health problem or a mental health condition at any given time. So, Ms. Siti was, was sharing earlier no, about, about uh, the mental health concern or mental health issue no, that uh, uh, she encountered, no, she experienced. Pero sabi ko, parang... Uh, Maganda yung gano'n, no? na nakakapagsalita tayo because it, it also helps uh, lessen the stigma, no? That, that helps a lot, okay? Uh, and it can happen to anyone regardless of age, gender, uh, sex, uh, um, socioeconomic status, uh, race, religion, kahit sino pwede. So kahit mayaman, kahit mahirap, pwedeng magkaroon ng mental disorder. Ayon. So, uh, and uh, one last thing, no? one last basic input that I'd like to share about mental health and mental disorder, hindi na siya binary concept 
lang. Uh, may mga researches na, no, na uh, particularly this Lancet Commission on Global Mental Health, they came out with a comprehensive article last year, I think in 2019. Uh, yung mental health natin, nasa continuum. Hindi kayong mentally healthy ka lang or may mental disorder ka. Hindi ganon. Parang uh, meron tayong on a scale of 1 to 10, for instance, 10 being the most mentally healthy, <clears throat> in any given day, pwede yung mental health natin nasa 5 or nasa 6 because it, it would depend on the situation that we find ourselves in. No? So, pwede ganon, pwede uh, lumipat-lipat. At hindi ibig sabihin na sa panahon na yon na hindi masyadong affected, uh, uh, you're affected by a certain situation, uh, you are already developing a mental disorder. So it doesn't uh, necessarily mean that it's that way already. So it's just uh, goes to show that yun nga, yung mental health natin affected talaga ng uh, circumstances uh, surrounding our lives. No? And uh, there's always that possibility that we'll go back to our usual normal selves uh, with proper interventions and uh, proper coping no, that uh, we will do. So, there. Napaka, para sa akin, napakalaking assurance na, uh, number one, yung sinabi po ni Dr. Raiko kanina, that ang perception kasi natin ng mental health problema talaga siya kagad. Eh. But then she yes. she reiterated over and over earlier that it's a positive thing. Um, mm -hmm. Our mental health, our mental well-being is a positive thing. Hindi ibig right. sabihin na yung katagang mental health na kung may problema na kagad to, may, mm -hmm. may tornilyo na kagad sa utak. <laughs> and um, di ba ganun po kasi hindi ko po yes. alam kung paano kayo well, pinalaki ng kultura natin na Na, yung kulang sa tornillo. Ano po yung famous na, na psychiatric? Yun, yun. O yung may mga ganun mga <laughs> kulang sa tornillo, mm -hmm. uh, sira ulo, mm -hmm. yan, yung mga yan. May krong-krong. <laughs> yes. Yes. O kaya kung nga, kumbaga parang um, sabihin mo lang isang araw na parang nalulungkot ako ngayon, iisipin na kagad nila na ng ibang tao na, na depression na, yun. Oh, depression na. Uh -huh. Pero yun pala, pwede na you are mm -hmm. sad today and that you are okay yes. tomorrow because it's yes. a continuing <clears throat> process of, of mm -hmm. being. And thank you so much, Doc. Um, we have questions now. Our first uh, would be, what can one do to help provide an environment that promotes and sustains good mental health? Mm, that's a, a very good question. No? Siguro in the context of our um, discussion now, no, being uh, you know, this is for educators, I think it's, it's very important to provide a, um, um, parang avenues uh, where people can talk about their feelings, their emotions. Siguro, I'm sure maraming mga meeting-meeting na yun, ano? pero one of the ways that uh, we can uh, do this is by... Um, uh, setting aside time, not just necessarily for the formal meetings, probably before or after the formal meetings, yung kumustahan sessions muna, and uh, structure it in such a way that it will be a safe space where uh, there will be no judgments about the feelings of, of each one when when people share no, about their difficulties para nandun yung, you know, the people feel that uh, it's okay to talk, no? ma-encourage sila. I think it's it's a, a good way no, of providing that kind of, of uh, a mentally healthy environment for, <clears throat> especially for our educators. I don't know how how you do it in in DepEd po. Baka yung per department ba? Kasi mahirap naman mag-share kung napakalaking grupo, di ba? So baka yung per, siguro yung science department or, you know, things like that. Yeah. Tsaka sa tingin ko yung salitang mental pa lang, no? Isa sa mga nagiging oh, yes. malakid or... Uh, it's difficult to talk about the word mental in itself. Sabi nga natin, ang daming tawag ng mga Pilipino tungkol pagka sinabing mental, iba yung naiisip nila. So siguro maganda, malaman natin from Dr. Raiko, paano ba natin marirremove yung stigma concerning mm -hmm. the different mm -hmm. mental health concerns na pagka nagkaroon ka ng mental Tama. health concern, mm -hmm. may something ka na, or ano, how, how do we handle that kind of stigma? I think that's very yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I think that's very important. No? Kasi actually, kahit naman hindi dito sa atin, kahit sa uh, 
in even in other countries no stigma is still very much there when it comes to mental health no uh, i think one of the ways by which we can lessen the stigma is by being watchful ourselves of our language be co- being conscious of our language miss city was saying earlier that um, you know things like uh, yung minsan sad ka lang pero ang ginagamit mong term depression yung ganyan we, we need to educate ourselves no because uh, like yung example na yon if you say that you're sad uh, uh, if you say if you say that you're depressed but you're actually you know just that's sad. just a normal sadness it diminishes the the impact no uh, of of the condition to those who are really experiencing it para minisip tuloy ng iba arte lang yan yung yung depression na yan kasi masyadong ninonormalize no yung yung language so that's one and then we should also uh, probably encourage an environment where physical and mental uh, physical health and mental health are equally taken care of yung yung pareho silang inaalagaan no uh, like um, i always say this no um I, I, I am hopeful of the time when uh, when people say that they're going to their uh, mental health professional or psychologist or counselor. Parang nagsasabi lang tayo ng pupunta ako sa dentist ko. Di ba? Yung, it, it's supposed to be like that because mm-hmm. like what I said earlier, there are conditions in fact that are really biological in nature like kulang sa sa neurotransmitter. So it's just like diabetes, di ba? May kulang sa'yo kaya meron kang sakit o yung insulin yon yung dito naman uh, dopamine or other neurotransmitters in the brain so you own parang to, to lessen the stigma okay um doctor Raiko meron po tayong mga kunting oh questions dito ngayon okay um would it be okay to address uh, one question Oh, sure. mm-hmm. uh, meron pa dito. Uh, do you have time for this part of the siguro okay lang. Okay lang. Or or na, okay. later na later na po siguro no. Uh, mm-hmm. let's let's move on to our um, next topic for today. Ito naman doc. Uh, talagang very ah, we have time. We have time daw. <laughs> ah, we have time. Okay, good. Sige. Ito po kasi doc. Ano po ang asabi po ni uh, Conscious kami sa oras eh. <laughs> Hindi po okay. ba po ba sa training? <laughs> um, De, okay lang. Sige. Okay. Go. Ito po. Um, Nasaan ba tayo? Ayun. Sabi ni Dr. Maramaya V. Tumalon, I am implementing a capstone project. Uh, it's a mental health management protocol when mm. I had the first activity as an intervention. Most of the participants ask, Ma'am, kami daw uh-huh. makamaliw. Mm-hmm. So, yan. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And then, meron din po siyang tanong kanina, ano po ba ang specific signs and sim- symptoms of a teacher at risk of mental health problems? Uh, okay. So, I, I think, um, first and foremost, makikita mo naman usually yan sa, sa appearance, no? And uh, the general behavior. So, minsan talagang makikita mo medyo nagde-deteriorate yung, yung appearance because uh, hygiene is already uh, being uh, neglected. And then, in terms of behavior or your interaction with other people, uh, you'd notice that there will be sudden changes, no? Um, yung iba na sobrang dati sociable, uh, would be suddenly withdrawn or yung iba naman parang uh, sobra namang naging sociable or lahat kinakausap so, makikita mo if if there are changes no um uh, in those behaviors moods also no yung parang uh, either too irritable or or um madaling very over overly sensitive, madaling magalit, um, things like that. No? So, makikita mo, uh, behaviorally, uh, physically, there would be those changes. But, uh, meron din yung mga nararamdaman uh, na experience no? na pwedeng hindi natin nakikita, like yung um, 
sleeping problems, either they're mm-hmm. oversleeping or or may may insomnia naman. And then in terms of eating patterns, yan, either eating too much or hindi talaga kumaka, kumakain. So all those things, uh, if if we see those things, mga ano, uh, lalo na yung sa, kahit sa umpisa pa lang, baka kailangan tanungin na natin, no? So, so Dr. Carol, sinabi mo yung mga signs and symptoms, no? Pero, ang isang tanong din dito ng ating isang teacher is, sino daw who can assess if a person needs um, mm-hmm. mental health uh, assistance siguro or services? Okay. Uh, well, technically, it would be... Um, a, a mental health professional, no, a psychologist, clinical psychologist, or a psychiatrist, to be able to really say that uh, a person has or has no mental disorder. So yon. Pero tayo bilang mga lay person, I think it is also very important that uh, we get these kinds of information because you know sometimes these people will not go and seek help. Uh, themselves, no? So, they will need other people to help them out. So, maganda na, tapos tayo rin, we can, we can also probably, if the person is not willing, siguro just inform the family, ganyan. But essentially, the uh, uh, people who can do these kinds of, of diagnosis and uh, create intervention plans or treatment plans would be yung mental health professionals talaga. Wag po tayong magda-diagnose ha. Wag nating sasabihin nakita natin because I gave some uh, inputs, de ba? At mamaya meron pa tayong ibang inputs. Um, this is not for us to say, oh si ganito, may problema o si ganyan. Hindi po ganun. Word of caution lang. Okay. Kailangan po talaga maingat po tayo sa mga salita na ginagamit. Yes. Hindi yes. lang para sa sarili, uh-huh. kundi uh, sa ibang tao tao din. Yes. yes. Very important. Um, Doc, uh, is it okay? Could we move to uh, discuss- discussing about stress, anxiety, okay. and depression? Okay. Sure. Can I share my slides again? Ayan. So, uh I was also asked not to talk about stress, anxiety, and depression. No? First, well, let's talk about stress. What is stress? It is the feeling we have when we are under pressure. So, sa ngayon siguro, lahat tayo, no? Stress. And it is the body's way of responding to any kind of demand. And uh, yung stress, it's not necessarily bad. Actually, it can be good, no? Ang tawag natin dun sa good stress is you stress, no? And uh, yung bad stress naman, yun yung distress. Yun yun talagang hindi na tayo masyado makakope, nahihirapan na tayo, parang day in, day out. Um, uh, we're not uh, able to do something, no? To, to address the, um, the stress that we're feeling. So, it becomes distress. So, Stress is normal. That's what I want to emphasize. In fact, uh, for a lot of people, stress propels them to do something about a particular situation. So, And also, uh, we have to understand that uh, our body automatically responds to stress. Yung tinatawag natin na uh, adrenaline, tsaka yung cortisol, these are stress hormones. Um, yung adrenaline natin, di ba naririnig natin, usually sinasabi yun, nag, uh, yung adrenaline ko, ang taas, no? Uh, kailan nangyayari ito? Hindi ba kapag may um, usual, uh, if there are um, crisis situations, fire, or even yung baha, we hear people or stories of people saying that uh, nak- nabuhat nila yung ref nila, ganyan, and these are not really um, uh, false stories or myth myth ano no uh, totoo yon kasi nga yung adrenaline natin it it makes us uh, stronger physically no there's a lot of uh, um, mechanisms going on in our body when there is a stressful situation and then when the situation normalizes uh, yung mga yon yung yung glucose level natin uh, it makes us stronger also because of the energy no, na, na nako-convert because of the glucose. So all of these things, they normalize uh, after the crisis situation. So yun yung nangyayari. So maganda. Even tayo, yung, when there's a deadline, hindi ba? Uh, kailangan maipasa mo na itong lesson plan na to. Uh, 
stress na stress ka, but actually, you're able to do it. Kahit stress na stress ka, what makes you do that? Because of these hormones that uh, your body produces, no? Okay. So, that's stress. Again, stress is normal. Kailan siya magiging abnormal? Later on, we will discuss that. Can we move on to the next slide? This is anxiety naman. Anxiety is a diffuse, unpleasant, vague sense of apprehension. So in Tagalog, we call it kaba, nervyos, hindi ka mapakali, or takot na takot ka about something that uh, parang hindi mo ma-pinpoint. You cannot really pinpoint what it is no? that you're really afraid of. Now, COVID-19 is really uh, making everyone anxious, right? But... Uh, there are probably instances no when you feel like um parang natatakot ka or kinakabahan ka alam mo dahil sa covid do pero you cannot pinpoint a specific uh specific reason no uh what what is it related to covid eh ginagawa mo naman lahat ng uh, um ano to ng prevention strategies but why do you still feel that way no so yun yung tinatawag nating anxiety and in in clinical terms it's called generalized anxiety disorder so it's like uh you're anxious for most of the day in a certain period and uh to be diagnosed that there has to be a set of criteria no na hindi lang tayo yung basta magsasabi sa sarili natin na may generalized anxiety disorder ako so ganon pero yun i don't know how you call it in in bisayan pero yung sa tagalog po yan nga yan yung kaba nervous di mapakali or or takot no okay so that's for anxiety and then for depression yung depression usually naman uh Yung iba, ang tawag nga dito, yun nga, yung lungkot, ganyan. But I, I, I just want to uh, clarify, no? Uh, yung lungkot, pwedeng kasama siya sa depression, but it's beyond lungkot. Mas malalim pa siya sa lungkot. In fact, we have some clients, no? Um, these are young students, personal clients of mine, who would say, Miss, mas maganda nga if I feel sadness pa eh, kasi at least I know that I'm alive because I feel something. For other people, it's really a parang an abyss, sobrang uh, emptiness, ganun yung description. So it's, it's a mental disorder. That's why you have to differentiate sadness from depression. So depression, it's a mental disorder that presents with depressed mood, loss of interest or pleasure, decreased energy, feelings of guilt or low self-worth, disturbed sleep or appetite, and poor concentration. And in, in more severe forms, it can lead to people um, thinking of ending their lives because there's nothing else there. Eh. So sobrang empty nga eh. There's no meaning anymore. So Yon. That's uh, clinical depression. Ano? Okay. Um, now, the question is, when does it become a mental disorder? So, ito po yon. When it is excessive. Uh, example, when you lose somebody, uh, siguro, uh, for whatever reason, naghiwalay kayo, or, or namatay, or, yeah, for whatever reason, Nakakalungko talaga yon, hindi ba? Kaiyak yon. Pero there will come a point in time when you will be able to um to recover from that, no? But for for um for clinical depression, hindi walang ganon. Minsan kahit walang rason, uh nandoon yung pakiramdam. Okay? It just, you know, out of nowhere, it's there. So uh yon. So excessive and then prolonged uh hindi natin pwedeng sabihin naman o hindi natin pwedeng taningan na o dapat isang linggo lang malungkot ka kapag nag-break kayo ng boyfriend mo pagkatapos niyan wala na hindi naman pwedeng ganun iba-iba rin naman talaga yung um, yung uh, ability natin no, to cope with different situations but extremely prolonged feelings no or or uh, emotional reactions to something uh, may be a symptom or a sign of something else no and uh, another one is when it already affects our daily functions when we feel sad you know we're still able to to um, to work right to to do our uh, day-to-day activities we're able to relate with people but uh, if it's a mental disorder al- already everything else is affected like uh, you don't 
uh, do your usual responsibilities, you're not able to perform these anymore. No? So these are excessive, prolonged, already affects our daily functions. Now, uh, there are about, I just talked to you about two, no? two mental disorders, yung, um, anxiety and depression. Pero siguro there are about three, more than 300 kinds of, of mental disorders there no, listed. At bawat isa po yan, merong criteria na tinatawag. Yung set ng criteria na yan, uh, importante na masabi ng mabuti sa mental health professional, can we go back yan? Masabi natin sa, sa mental health professional para sila mismo yung magsabi na okay, this is this disorder and not that disorder and this is the kind of treatment needed for this kind of disorder. So, yun. Okay, now, stress, uh, next slide please. Stress is, uh, like what I said earlier, it's something that is normal. It becomes, uh, it can cause uh, these kinds of disorders when it is prolonged also and without healthy coping. No? So, hindi tayo nakakakop. Iba, when they are stressed, um, uh, what do they do? Nagsusukong sa vices, no? Um, sigarilyo, inom, or even drugs. No, that's not healthy coping. And these may actually lead to um, more severe forms of mental disorders. So, yun. Okay. Okay. So, thank you very much, Dr. Raiko. No? That's very informative. Pero siguro for us to know naman sa level naman mga uh, kasama natin dito teachers. Um, let's ask uh, Sir R.D. and Ms. Gantalaw if they would, uh, it would be okay for them to share yung, ano ba yung everyday challenges nila as a regional director and as a teacher that might have an effect on their mental health. Mas maganda para... Uh, I'm sure the, the teachers here will be familiar with those concerns also and this might give them a comfort to the fact that they're not alone in experiencing those things para lang maka-level off natin. So, Sir R.D. and Ms. Gandalao, sino po kung gusto magsimula sa inyo? Sige po. <laughs> Thank you. Ano po yung mga challenges natin? Uh, okay po. Uh, as to the challenges, no, as a regional director in the regional office, uh, one of the challenges is in the uh, schedules, everyday schedules, and uh, another is yung as if everybody believes that you know all, you know all, or uh, every time they will uh, bring you something like uh, a, a concern or an issue, uh, people would think that you can address that issue. So that's why I am but also a human being. I also have other uh, so many concerns not only in the uh, not only uh, not only in the office but also in the in the uh, fa my, my family. You know? So uh, those are the the day-to-day -day, uh, actually challenges in my office. So especially now that we are the new normal. No, that uh, uh, number one is meetings. For example, meetings, central office will call for a meeting, conflict with the meeting with other agencies, and all are very important and need that the regional director will be attending. So those are part. So sometimes I will think of what shall I do with this? So the stress, uh, mm -hmm. my heart keep on pumping. Uh, that's why <laughs> sometimes also uh, I even ask one of our and uh, friend doctor, why is it that I have also some uh, like bump ups here at, at the at my ano yung sa okay. mm -hmm. so at sabi stress daw yun sabi ko uh -huh. yes. uh, baka, yun na, na ma, iba na siyang stress ang ano parang accumulating cortisol na yung eh, mm -hmm. ini ko do uh, dahil doon na uh, yung coping mechanism na lang ang ano ko I have to be with uh, my my children, no? So tatawa ko sa para sa kanila, mag uh, kami ng ng uh, movie together para at least uh, from uh, a moment or in time mayroon talaga akong ma-out ako sa yung iniisip ko na nako baka pag tuloy-tuloy ito, baka uh, pagdating ko sa office eh, palagi nila akong tumatawa, no? So <laughs> hindi na smile. <laughs> Tumatawa na. So, yun, 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 mga, mga concerns actually every day. Especially now 
in this uh, crisis of pandemic especially that we are uh, in Cebu no i am in mm, Cebu city yes. mm. and the enhanced community quarantine keep on extending palagi na lang inextend extend extend so yun yun ang ano din ang problema natin aside from that we're thinking of how can we help our people uh, because uh, i always had in mind what uh, what will be the benefits what will be the welfare for our people not only in the regional office but all the 19 divisions uh, teaching and non-teaching personnel in region 7 central visayas and to date we have around 82000 more or less teaching and non-teaching personnel how can i possibly uh, help them also cope with their uh, stresses and all. So those are some of the uh, challenges that I am uh, always thinking. You know? Sometimes I cannot sleep. So uh, possibly with this, uh, with this uh, uh, seminar or a webinar, I will be helped you know? uh, in relation to all those concerns that I have and the challenges that I am facing here. Thank you. Sure, ang dami nyo palang dala, kaya sumasakit yung likod nyo. Yung 82,000 na yun, nasa likod nyo lahat. Ano? Pero gusto kong sabihin kay R. Diesel, maha pa rin po kayong fresh, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Tsaka, yeah, I just would like to share. Talagang makikita mo yung, yung sincerity ni yes. R. Diesel. No? Yes. Yung, parang he's been very consistent about talking about um, how to be able to help uh, be more of assistance to the uh, teachers non teaching personnel so i salute you sir thank you thank you doc siguro sa din sa inyo because uh, you are really instruments from god uh, to help us, to help me as well no personally you help me so that i can help other people lahat tayo may kanya-kanyang role po yes Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Siguro sa level naman ng mga teachers, let's hear from Ms. Rollin siguro. Ms. Rollin, ano naman yung challenges sa inyo? Yes, hello po. Ms. Rollin, wala ka pong camera. Gusto hello namin po. makita ang... <laughs> Pretty face. Hello Pretty face. You cannot start your video kasi daw. <laughs> Sabi <laughs> ng host. <laughs> ah, okay. Sige po. Magsistart na po yan. Ayan, there you go. Okay po. So as a teacher naman po, um, I have been um, in, the, um, in the service for around five years. And during those five years po, as a teacher, I have become dependent on routinary activities as an educator. So um, one of the challenges talaga po that I experienced during the pandemic, and I believe all of the teachers, is the fact that there was a sudden alteration sa mga schedules namin. Um, I believe that the quarantine started um, on the early parts of May or March, March yon, yes. and it has affected everyone po since then. Not only the education sector, but all of the people in the world. So supposedly March would have been the month uh, magpa-finalize na kami ng mga grades ng mga bata. And then it would have been the time na magkakaroon na ng remedials or final counseling sa mga bata. And then on the early days of April, that would be the time na magkakaroon na ng graduation. So at that point in time, we would be very busy na in, pre in preparing for the report cards of the children, tapos yung mga honor students pa, yung mga certificates nila, ganon. And all of a sudden, it was cancelled. So, um, the reaction really was, ano, yung parang hindi kami prepared for what is to come. On the early parts of February kasi, um, there was this announcement from the governor of the province of Negros Oriental na magkaroon ng parang three-day suspension of classes because they were trying to um, they were trying to uh, protect the children and everyone in the community, especially in the province of Negros Oriental because there have been reported cases during that time dito sa Negros Oriental. So yung mga kabataan, they were really very happy na three days walang pasok. But little did they know na um, it would worsen pala in the next few days. So when March came, 
um, marami ng mga na-miss na mga activities, um, nakabigay lang kami ng fourth periodical test namin, and then afterwards, it was declared na talagang ika-cancel na lahat ng mga classes and it really came from the Department of Education so we really have to follow the protocol so a lot of students have missed their first uh, promenade sana mm. yung first time nila na mag-march sa graduation mm, yeah. yung first time na magwe-wear sana sila ng kanilang mga toga so as teachers It really feels heartbreaking din po na makita yung mga kabataan na hindi nila ma-experience yung yung um, entire year na ina-anticipate nila na gusto nilang ma-experience. So if uh, kung parang yung feeling ba na what breaks their hearts breaks ours also. Kaya mm-hmm. parang parang feeling namin na Um, stressful siya, nakakaawa and we, we feel like he, wala kaming magawa to help them at that point. So, yun. Isa yun sa mga naging challenges namin and of course ngayon is July. It's the nutrition month no in the Department of Education. We are celebrating nutrition month in the month of July. So, dapat sana ngayon we are already Um, having cook-off, yung mga ganon cook-off sa culmination program, yung mga teachers busy na sa pag-prepare sa kanilang mga kabataan, and then mag-suot ng mga headdresses na puro yung gulay at prutas yung ilalagay sa ulo ng mga kabataan. <laughs> Tapos yung mga parents busy na rin na magpa-print ng mga picture ng gatas, ng itlog, ng mga pagkain na nasa Go, Grow and Glow. Tapos ilagay sa mga ulo ng ng mga bata. So, all of those things nagiging throwback na lang. <laughs> Parang ganun. Okay. So, um, hindi na talaga na-experience na, ng Department of Education yung mga simple things na ganun that really makes memory sana sa mga kabataan. So, that's one of the challenges po, yung sudden alteration of schedules. And then next po, yung fear ng mga teachers na baka the government will suddenly decide na islash out yung big percentage ng salary namin. Hindi kami really um, sure about that. We were just making our mga haka-haka or hunches mm-hmm. na baka mangyari yon. And then what will happen to our family if this uh, this happens, if the government suddenly decides tapos ito lang yung main source of income namin, what will happen? Or much worse, we could lose our jobs. Parang ganun. Kasi we are not conducting any classes anymore. So, at first, I, I thought na um, baka ako lang yung nag-iisip na mawalan kami ng trabaho. But then again, when I tried to ask a teacher friend about this, sabi niya, he also had this same thought. And then there was even a time na he just looked at his sleeping daughter and then parang yung suddenly umiyak na lang siya na hindi niya, na, hindi niya alam kung bakit siya umiyak. Um, probably because of the overthinking ba na hindi talaga sure kung anong mangyayari in the next few months or in the next few weeks. It's really very uncertain. Pero... At this moment, uh, we are really very thankful for the Department of Education uh, because, well, mainly, we still get to keep our jobs. And then, nakaka-attend din po kami ng mga webinars, na bibigyan na din po kami ng mga roles and responsibilities namin in the Department of Education. So, like, for example, writing modules, ganun po. Mm-hmm. And then those under GCQ or general community quarantine and modified general community quarantine areas, teachers are starting to report to school na po um, on a skeleton workforce scheme. So um, teachers are trying to um, get up from the, the feeling of anxiety and fear that they really experience, especially on the early months of the lockdown or the quarantine. And then another challenge po is um, 
the fact na hindi hu lahat ng mga teachers ay uh, let's say tech savvy o yung talagang merong great idea or knowledge about technology. Um, there are also other places in the Philippines, in the Division of Negros Oriental to be specific, na hindi pa rin naaabot ng signal. Um, so kapag merong mga online reports na kailangan gawin, so nahihirapan po talaga sila. I even uh, have this teacher friend na during the lockdown, um, sabi ng mga colleagues niya na siya na lang yung walang report, <laughs> so kailangan na siyang mag-submit. Eh, online, online survey siya. So, kailangan pa siyang lumabas. She needs to travel pa for a few meters outside her home para makakuha ng good signal. Kaso, wala ho siyang quarantine pass. And then, uh, a few meters from their home, merong um, checkpoint, ganon. So, talagang she felt really confused kung anong gagawin kasi um, nag-deadline na yung online survey. So, kailangan niya talagang gawin. So, what she really did was um, naglakas loob siya na lumabas, nag-pray na sana hindi mahuli ng police kasi nga wala siyang quarantine pass. Successful naman yung pagpasa niya ng online survey. Pero yun nga, thrilling, very thrilling yung kanyang experience. Yun. And then lastly po, I believe, one of, uh, I believe this is a challenge po sa mga teachers, yung being bombarded with fake news, with misinformation and negativities online. So I have read and some of um, my teachers, my co-teachers have read online about um, people trying to make comments like, for example, um, split na lang yung salary ng teachers sa mga parents kasi during the quarantine, ang mga parents naman ang mag bibigay ng ano, lessons kasi homeschooling naman ang mangyayari. Parang ganun ba na um, split na lang daw yung salary. And then some would also say nagre-raise ng concern kung bakit daw nakaka-receive ng bonus yung mga teachers, eh, wala namang classes, ganun. But little did they know na yung mga blessings na natatanggap ng mga teachers, sinishare din nila sa community. I have teacher friends who help in the repacking of goods. And kami po sa Division of Negros Oriental, and I believe in the region, uh, in Region 7, teachers give any amount to the community na ginagawa po namin um, source na nakakabili ng mga goods repack and then distributed to the community, especially to those people or families who have been greatly affected by the pandemic. So, sana um, these people have seen the efforts of the teachers to also help the community para naman po hindi palaging bombarded with negativities and fake news, fake news yung mga teachers. So yun lang po, those are the main challenges or concerns ng mga teachers po in the field. Okay, hey, thank you so much, Ms. Rowland, for sharing. Um, before we move on to the next topic, may we remind um, our viewers and our participants here that you can send, still send in your questions through the comments uh, section and we will respond to your question, comments later. Um, ito na po. Isa, would you... Actually, this person na bibigatan ako sa next natin na, na topic eh. Yeah. <laughs> Kasi ito na, very so, wrong. We can move on to the next topic, no? Um, siguro, Dr. Riker, at this point in time, let's talk about naman. Ano ba naman yung effects nitong COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, mm -hmm. Context ng mental health uh, ng mga educators natin, mga teachers natin. Oh. Okay, thank you. No, uh, actually, as I was listening to Miss Rowling, uh, she gave a comprehensive uh, uh, observation, no, of of uh, the effects of, of this COVID nineteen pandemic on on them, no, as educators, as teachers. Well, uh, una, siguro sabihin natin hindi lang sa educators, to, no. Uh, at first. Um, Mag magpaka-anes tayo. Nung una nung sinabi sa atin na, you know, we'll be working from home, etc. Hindi ba, 
I would like to assume all of us or most of us were thinking, "Oy, mas okay yan. We will, especially for us here, no? Yung yung sa traffic, di ka na magta-travel, etc." Uh, pero after a couple of weeks of meetings, planning, uh, coordinations, um, preparations, and all of that. Um, let's face it, diba? and let's admit it, it has actually become very, very stressful for us. Why? Because um, nawala yung boundaries. Eh, no? I think mm-hmm. one of the panelists already mentioned this earlier. The boundary meaning, uh, you know, uh, pre-COVID-19, um, our, our home life is our home life. We usually, probably we, we um, um, bring home some work, pero konting oras lang. And then, talagang alam mo na ang boundary mo, uh, bahay ka. So, you do things that are, um, you know, the, the things that you do at home. And then, you go to work. Uh, the things that your, your concerns about, about your home, hindi mo nadadala. Minsan, madadala mo onte, But at least, the physical space, uh um, makikita mo na sa trabaho ka na, so it helps you psychologically, no, to shift. Now there's no more boundaries, there's no more compartmentalization. So hindi tayo na compartmentalize ngayon. Your family's there at home, uh, anytime within the day, even while you're working, they can always ask you, uh, anong ula mamayang lunch? O kaya, um, nako, kailangan ko pa palang gawin to. O lahat ng sira sa bahay, napapansin. All of those things, you know. And um, it has become very, very stressful for everyone, I think. Lalo sa educators. Kasi nga, uh, sa ngayon, kayo yung pinaka nagpe-prepare for uh, an impending ano eh, opening of classes, which is already by next month, right? So that compartmentalization, the boundaries set before, it's absent now. So na enmesh kumbaga lahat ng ating mga uh, mga kayang hindi isipen dante, no? Yung mga uh, things like um, uh, I will leave it first at home because you know um, I can always go back to it. Probably when I um, I have a different perspective uh, after this, I can go back to it and and have that solution, no? Because we're 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 having a different environment now. There's no more like that. So um, physically, no, yung mobility natin very very much restricted, and for some that's also very stressful, especially if they're used to moving around a lot. Um, yung sinabi ni Ms. Rowling about uh, the uncertainty no, because of the socioeconomic uh, effect of this on them. No? A lot of people are actually really anxious, afraid to lose their jobs. And some actually did. Uh, I would like to say medyo suerte talaga uh, ang mga nasa DepEd pa because I know of a lot of friends from, from schools, no, private schools at that, who either... Um, have uh ano yun, yung the, the salary has been cut mm-hmm. or talagang outright hindi na reach yung quota so ng enrollment so magsasara so yung mga ganon no it's a very good thing that uh before uh before this uh went on miss Rowling mentioned that um na sabi sa kanila na tuloy pa rin etc because that's very important the assurance no and uh, of course yun nga yung yung psycho emotional effect naman din ito sa atin no yung uh, some teachers their tactile hindi personality to eh yung gusto nila yung nakikita nila live yung mga students no uh, nakakausap nakakahuntahan and uh, so with their co-teachers the interaction you know those social interactions they're absent now even if virtually nagkikita-kita kayo nagmi-meeting kayo it's it's still a different thing, no? To to be there, uh, you cannot even hug each other, even if you miss each other so much because that's not allowed, you know. Uh, so those things, no? Um, even if we say that oh, late, late na bagay na mga yan, for some people, these actually mean a lot. This mean, uh, this means that their support system is not there anymore because you know uh, their support system is supposed to be being with people around people whom they really um, trust, right? So you all, no? 
so given that a lot of emotions no next slide please are are um you know it's it's normal to feel all of these things sige paki ano nga paki click ayan may drama lang konti so yan yung all of these feelings no sadness there's uh shocked no uh, especially during the the early times no the earlier times that this happened no exhausted uh, how many among us feel that even if we're at home and we have you know we can sleep naman talaga na mas maaga ganyan because uh, we do not brave the traffic anymore but still when we wake up you know you, you still feel exhausted right so it's it's uh, a, deeper form of tiredness, no? confused. Uh, some of us are oversensitive and some relationships no? uh, in our online support, I, I see some um, uh, clients no? who admit to us that their relationships, they thought at first that um, uh, it will be nurtured because they're all together, there's more time. But when you're together 24-7, all of the littlest details about each other, you get to see it. Eh. So, nagiging irritant din siya. And coupled with uh, the anxiety brought forth by this pandemic, uh, all of these factors put together, um, nagiging uh, cause no, of, uh, of relationship breakdown for some, especially if the communication lines are not open. No? Um, and then, yeah, yung, they're worried, uh, yeah, you may make a comment. So true, no? Working from home and working for home are mixed up. Right. Totoo po yan. Even us, no? Uh, even if you're a mental health professional, I tell you, it happens too. So it's very important to be self-aware, no? And uh, I think it's also very important that um, uh, we open this up, no? To, to our loved ones so that uh, they also understand where we're coming from. Hindi yung basta ka na lang nagagalit. Okay? So, yon Some of the effects. And I think a lot of the other more specific effects on, on uh, our mental health were already mentioned by Ms. Rowling. So. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Raiko. Um, given that R.D. Jimenez and Ms. Rowling have... Uh, gave us an overview of, of the challenges that they have faced this uh, pandemic. Um, yung question, Doc, how can educators balance their workload and mental health at this mm -hmm. time? Yeah, uh, that's a, a very good question, no? Um, actually, yung balancing, excuse me, nagsisimula din sa atin, no? We should, uh, concretely, what we can do is, um, uh, one of the things that we can do is, to orient our family members then no? that uh, we, we set uh, aside a specific time for working at home. So that's one, set aside a specific time and then set aside a specific place Okay. Parang yung, yung physical space, tsaka yung psychological space mo, alam mo sa sarili mo that during this time, during this period, I am here, I am working, and I will do things that are related to work. And um, as much as possible, uh, be faithful to that. And uh, orient your family members that that is your uh, your work time, right? That they cannot disturb you during that period. Baka that could help, no? And um, oh, oh, tayo then. Uh, let's also be mindful of our emotions, because minsan kapag uh, we're so engrossed in what we're doing, we want to finish up eh, everything, no? Uh, minsan nag over na tayo and uh, nawawala yung work life balance no i know it is very very difficult i know it's easier said than done but we have to start somewhere kasi eh. so baka we can start with with that practice muna at this time and then uh, when we feel stressed ganyan kasi coping naman for us it's it's not one size fits all no mm -hmm. so let's try to explore ways by which uh, we 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 can cope and uh, a coping mechanism that works for us. Kasi sa iba, sasabihin mo ganito, hindi naman nag-work sa kanila yun. So, depende rin talaga dun sa tao. Doc, ano po kayo yung mga examples ng mga coping mechanisms? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for some, um, you know, singing is uh, is a coping mechanism for them. No, Yung, uh, alam mo yun, yung 
it, it relieves stress for them. No? Uh, mindfulness is also one. There are specific activities actually, you know, singing, dancing, uh, you know, physical activities, exercise, um, uh, that's helpful no, for some. But for others who are not very um, artistic, yun nga, yung mas meditative sila, uh, they can do some mindfulness exercises, no? grounding, breathing. Uh, for some people, actually, when, when uh, I always uh, give this as an advice because I also use it myself, no? uh, when I feel so overwhelmed, like, uh, dami-dami, ang dami-dami na talagang gagawin, uh, hindi mo na alam kung anong unahin mo. It helps to pause, actually. And when you pause, you do some breathing exercises. And how do you do the breathing exercises? Uh, you just sit down. Uh, in that physical space of yours and then uh, slowly do the breathing no? ang tawag ko doon 5, 5, 5 so 5 counts slow counts, inhale through the nose and then hold for 5 counts and then slowly 5 counts uli, exhale through the mouth siguro um, you know, repeat that for as long as parang kinakabahan ka pa kasi uh, the thing with feeling super anxious or super overwhelmed this is that you know that feeling passes eh so nawawala rin siya kapag nag uh, actually nag automatic tayo hindi natin napapansin pero kapag medyo kinakabahan tayo hindi ba napapansin natin napapabuntong hininga tayo so it's just being mindful of that and doing it as an exercise to cope with that uh, particularly overwhelming feeling at that particular point in time so some of the things that we can do so, Dr. Raiko, yung isang sinabi mo kanina, no, ang dami-daming binabalance ng mga taong yes. because of this pandemic. Merong isang concept na parang nauso ngayon, ang tawag dito toxic productivity. Eh. Ah, so, yeah. Yeah. what is it? Ano ba yung toxic productivity and how do we address it if it needs to be addressed? And um, what are the steps beneficial to address this behavior? Mm -mm. Yung... Actually, kahit wala pang pandemic, medyo maraming tao na yung ganito, no? Guilty as charged of toxic productivity. <laughs> you know, it's the uh, parang unhealthy and excessive obsession about being productive, no? Regardless of uh, uh, whether the output is of quality, no? Basta dapat uh, makaproduce, makaproduce, ganyan. Remember that in our... Um, uh, my discussion about the characteristics of a mentally healthy person, kasama doon yung productivity. Pero sinabi rin natin doon, hindi lang basta productivity, di ba? It has to be yung uh, something of value, uh, uh, creatively done, ganyan. Yung you're happy that you created that. In, in toxic productivity, it's a different thing. You just want to, uh, you know, accomplish things, uh, accomplish and accomplish. It's like a never-ending, an insatiable desire, no? To to accomplish something, and uh, it's bad when it is tied up already with your self worth. Parang kapag hindi ka nakaproduce ng araw na to, ang bababa ng tingin mo sa sarili mo. Mm -hmm. Or when you um you know when you are able to uh, accomplish something, you feel good about yourself, but for a very little while, and then anjan ka na naman, gusto mo na naman, gusto mo na naman, ano? So how can we address this, no? Tinin ko very, uh, ang isang, unang-unang dapat natin gawin, let's be good to ourselves, no? Especially at this time, especially at this time, we cannot uh, expect ourselves to be as productive as, as we were pre-pandemic times. Di ba? Parang, parang ages ago yun, pre-pandemic times. <laughs> parang, we, we cannot expect ourselves to be that kasi, ah, uh, what I failed to mention earlier was that it's normal to feel abnormal at this time because we are an ab in an abnormal situation. You know, uh, we're in a crisis. We're not in a normal... Uh, what I mentioned earlier was uh, a person who is mentally healthy can cope with the normal stresses of life, right? But this is not a normal... Uh, just a normal stress of life. It's a pandemic. It's affecting everyone globally. So let's be good to ourselves. Um, uh, siguro prioritization lang of what things need to be done at a particular day and uh, reward ourselves, no? Uh, it, it's, it's very... Uh, 
parang heartwarming naman if even if we were able to accomplish something at the beginning uh, at, at the end of the day kahit pa paano yung reward yourself with little things na your panoorin mo yung favorite k drama mo si mm-hmm. yun din di ba so uh, one episode lang hindi binge watching ha hindi rin healthy yun. and then also no yung uh, the, the boundaries no will have to be clearly set Again, I know we were we've been repeating this again and again. Uh, this times boundaries are very important, no? Hindi yung porket hindi mo pa natatapos, dapat matapos mo kahit alas 9 na ng gabi, alas 12 na ng gabi. Hindi pwedeng ganoon. Kasi it's fueling eh, your toxic yeah. productivity pa din eh. Parang your need to be to be productive, but it's very toxic and eventually uh it will catch up with you eh yung you know sa um uh physical health mo din no and mental health also thank you dr rico really appreciate all that you have been sharing sobrang helpful po talaga lahat even for me na hindi educator but um, po. sobra po talaga um doc um how do we now care for our educators mental health in this okay. abnormal time Okay, so we move on no, to the next topic. Okay, so ito na actually yung meat ng ating topic. Basically, what I will be sharing with you here, I think uh, most of these are some things that you already do. It just helps that we hear it because it validates that, ah, tama pala yung ginagawa ko. Or for some, parang paalala because because of the pandemic na minsan na, nawawala na, no? nawawala na to sa kanila. So how do we care for our mental health amidst the pandemic, educator or not? The framework that I will be using is uh, uh, positive psychology. No? Positive psychology among all the psychological models I, I've, I've uh, studied. I think this one clearly resonates with me because as it says, as the name says, it's something that is very positive. It's a scientific study of happiness, of how people can flourish and uh, nourish their mental health um, uh, looking at things no, from a positive lens. No? So yun yung, yun yung isha-share ko sa inyo ngayon. No? Uh, okay, next slide please. Okay, we start first with with positive emotion. Now, I think the single most factor that can help us, you no, know, in in addressing all of these negativities now, anxieties, uh, uh, depression, uh, uh, depressive propensities, stresses is is to nurture our positive emotions. So, first and foremost, I'd like to share with you what we call the positivity ratio. Okay, so what is a positivity ratio? Okay, sige. Yung positivity ratio, it is when you experience more positive emotions than negative ones at a ratio of three positive emotions to every one negative, you can enter into an upward spiral of growth. So what do we mean by this? No? Um, when we experience a, a, uh, parang a situation that makes us feel negatively, no? that triggers negative emotions in us, um, Ano ba example na ito? Lagi tayong nasa bahay, oh, nag-away kayo ng asawa mo, nagkatampuhan kayo, or sinagot ka ng anak mo, so it triggers negative emotions, right? We have to be conscious of uh, to actively seek for, um, for situations naman that will give us uh, positive emotions in order to neutralize the effect of that negative emotion in us. Otherwise, kung yung usual selves natin na sa beginning of the day may hindi magandang nangyari, ay parang domino na, no? Lahat na ng ano, lahat na ng pangyayari, galit ka na, naiinis ka na because kasi sinimulan na ko ng ganitong ah, ng ganito eh. Parang it's like you are a uh, uh, sumusunod ka lang, ganun, doon sa kung ano yung nangyari. You're not in control of things. Here, you're more in control. You're the one seeking positivity. You're the one seeking positive emotions by creating um, positive experiences that will also give you positive feelings. Otherwise, kapag hindi mo ginawa yun, um, uh, pwedeng mag-spiral down ka instead of spiral, uh, upward spiral of growth. What's spiraling down? If Every day, 
negative feelings yung mas triggered sa yo and uh, mas prone ka talaga to think negatively you know negative thinkers yung mga tinatawag natin na negative thinkers or pessimists uh, some studies already have shown that they are more prone to develop mental disorder certain kinds of mental disorder so ayaw natin yon so we have to be uh, consciously seeking no positive experiences yung positive experiences naman it need not be something grand no hindi naman mag-travel ka in the first place you cannot travel now it can be as as simple as um uh eating your favorite food no uh, or hugging your child or uh siguro yun nga no no watching a, a an episode of your favorite um series no so all of these can give us positive emotions so yun yun no? uh, para man neutralize hindi ba okay so positivity ratio and uh that's it's based on a research by Barbara Fredrickson no, which she used in her book positivity okay next slide please okay so what are the ways to increase positive emotions ay isa isa lang muna <laughs> Okay, let's start with an attitude of gratitude. Dapat daw more gratitude, less attitude. Uh, gusto ba natin yan? Sana ganun, ano? Okay, so um, attitude of gratitude. Uh, I think you've heard this often enough, no? The, the grateful people are the happiest people. Tama? When we uh, uh, search for things that we will be grateful about, Actually, marami tayong makikita eh. Marami tayong malilista kung talagang, kung talagang naghahanap tayo. Pero sa totoo din, we can always find things that are lacking if we focus on that. Marami ka rin malilista. So it's really a matter of perspective. What do you want to focus on? Now, that's different naman from yung toxic positivity na sinasabi natin na gusto mo lang parang dinedenay mo naman yung presence ng negativity that's different naman because toxic positivity naman is um it's not accepting that uh that um there are negative side of things meron naman talagang negative side of things and in genuine positivity uh alam mo you know that uh, things are not going well or that there's COVID, you know, it's lethal, it's highly contagious, you know, all of that. But uh, you know that you can do something about it, no? It doesn't stop with that, with just knowledge. Hindi niya dinideny yung presence, yung negativity. So I hope that's clear, no? Uh, so going back, no, yung attitude of gratitude, yun yung focusing on what we have rather than what we don't have. Okay, so and then be, be, being thankful for that and being happy for that. There's still something that's lacking, yes, but at least for now, these are the things that I have and I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy about it. Okay, if you can work for the things that you want to have at this time, so be it. But you still have to, you know, you still need to be grateful for the things that you already are enjoying right now. Okay, so next. Learning optimism. Yan. Yung learning optimism, isa rin ko sa favorite ko. Ito yung, uh, we challenge the negative self-talks, no? Uh, ano yung mga negative self-talks natin? Siguro hindi natin, hindi tayo uh, aware dito, no? Pero there are things that we say to ourselves that become our reality. Uh, example, hindi ko kaya yan, or... I'm never good enough or I'm not good enough. Uh, I can't do that kasi kulang ako sa ganito or kulang ako sa ganyan or I'm not that beautiful as compared to others. Those are our negative self-talks. And these negative self-talks, usually, they came from um, from way, way back. no? From people significant to us, um, from... Uh, Pwedeng parents, pwedeng significant others, uh, that who, who were important influences in our lives. So, hindi naman sa sinisisi natin sila. Kasi they're also a product of how they were brought up, no? And they're also a product of the things that were said to them. So, parang ano siya, parang ripple effect. Ngayon tayo na-apektan tayo. Pero... The thing is that we're mature adults now and we have that choice what to believe, okay? So, how do we do that? Let us uh, 
uh, challenge those negative self-talks. Instead of telling yourself that you can't do this or you're not beautiful enough, you know, you have to, ako, what I do, I have a mantra every beginning of the day, right? So wh what is my mantra at the beginning of the day? What do I tell myself? I am a beautiful person inside out. I am at peace with myself and with others. I am mentally healthy. So I start with that. And there are days that I don't feel like, like saying it because I don't feel like it. But I say it anyway. Why? Because no one will say it to me. <laughs> so ako yon at kailangan paniwalaan ko. Some days it will not be easy. Some, at, at the start, it will be um, parang corny naman, ganyan. Pero as you move along, you know, uh, as you practice it, as you exercise those positivity uh, statements about yourself, you will learn to believe it. You will learn to act it, no? Kasi, uh, sabi nga, yung how we treat ourselves or how others treat us is actually uh, a mirror of how we treat ourselves. So, uh, if we show other people that we love ourselves, that we respect ourselves, they will respect us too, okay? Um, okay, next. Humor and laughter. Ayan. Uh, sabi kanina ni Sir R.D., uh, mahirap yun tumawa naman mag-isa, no? Oo din. Pero, <laughs> the benefits of humor and laughter. What are the benefits of humor and laughter? Physically, you know, it, it, it decreases, no? The level of stress hormones in our body. So, yung adrenaline, yung cortisol, um, nadidecrease yan, no? Kasi sabi na natin, if our stress levels are always up, mahihirapan tayo mag, uh, parang physically, it will exhaust us. Until the point that we will be, um, ano to, yung, we will get sick, no? So, humor and laughter, no? Yung belly laughter, healthy laughter, it, it decreases, no? The level of, uh, of uh, stress hormones. And on the other hand, it naman increases uh, our endorphin levels. Ano yung endorphins? Uh, hindi ba may morphine yung parang sinasaksak dun sa mga, those who are in extreme pain? Uh, diba, yung sa iba sinasabi nga nakaka-high yun. But there, we have this um, natural morphine in our body. And yun nga yung endorphins. No? And humor and laughter uh, help in increasing uh, those hormones. No? So, anong nangyayari kapag, kapag mataas yung endorphins natin? We're less immune to diseases. Uh, we're happier and uh, we're, we're healthier. Okay, so that's you more and laughter. Physical pa lang yon. At saka, um, socio-emotional naman. Hindi ba kapag lagi kang masaya, other people are drawn to you eh. You don't want to, to approach a person who's always frowning, hindi ba? Mas maganda yung, um, yung, yung masayang tao and um, those people who, take, who don't take themselves too seriously. Ang mahirap din kasi sa atin, um, Kapag nagkakamali tayo, hindi tayo masyadong mabilis magpatawad sa sarili natin. We cannot forgive ourselves for things that uh, we failed to do. Sometimes, you know, you just have to um, uh, learn from the experience, of course. And then, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow is another day you can try again. So, there. Taking care of your physical health. Uh, this one I cannot overemphasize. Why? Para tong ano eh, yung sa COVID-19, use of face mask, um, uh, physical distancing, what else? Uh, yung constant hand washing, parang ganun din, no? Yung taking care of our physical health, that includes eating right, no? So, lessen the intake of um, artificial sugars, artificial food, flavorings, mga ganyan, uh, Caffeine, nako maraming guilty dito. Sa, yung, yung, sabi, yung coffee daw, three cups in a day would be okay already no? sa, sa ating katawan. More than that, uh, um, pwedeng mas makasama na no? instead of makabuti. Pero yeah, iba-iba rin kasi rin yung, yung effect din sa atin. Ano? Pero generally, no? Uh, some experts say that three cups would be okay for us. But else, so we are what we eat. So we have to be careful about uh, what we put in our body. And uh, exercise is also very important to us. No? Uh, 
we have to be active lalo ngayon i think some uh, exercises no are are allowed now no? biking um jogging walking for instance zumba even at home you can you can do that and sleep it's also very important no yung sleep um uh ito guilty tayo dito because of fomo or the fear of missing out. Di lang estudyante yung ganyan eh. Yung at the end of the day, bago matulog. Kasi sige, mag-check lang ako ng Facebook ko. And then you find out later on, ako alas 12 na pala. <laughs> kakascroll, kakascroll, no? Okay. Uh, okay. So, relationships also and uh, finding meaning. Relationships, it's very... Um, it makes us feel good no to know that someone loves us and that we we love them in return it need not be romantic relationships uh it it can be good relationships with your parents siblings etc happiness shared is happiness squared and another way no this is the last one i think to to increase positive emotion is finding meaning no in in uh, our experiences whether negative or positive and i i believe that spirituality plays a part in this diba? when we look at our negative experiences uh from our faith's perspective it becomes more meaningful it becomes more purposeful parang mas nabibigyan natin ah kaya pala nangyari to dahil mangyayari so those are the ways to increase positive emotions. Thank you so much once again, Dr. Dr. Raiko. And uh, now I think we can proceed with our live Q&A with our teachers. Uh, okay. Teacher Joanne Mondala has a question. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. I am Joan Mandala, head teacher from the division of Lapu Lapu City Cebu. So I just uh, want to be enlightened with the following questions. Actually, I have four questions. If it's okay. Let's see. Sige po. <laughs> I'm sure we, we can accommodate. Okay. So um, first. Uh, do you have laid out programs, especially uh, specifically for teachers? Uh, and how are we going to avail to such programs if you have? And second, if there is a teacher exhibiting signs and symptoms of mental health problems, uh, would you recommend giving PFA right away? Or would you recommend this teacher to see a psychologist or psychiatrist first? And my third question is, in relation to psychological first aid, who is the best person to conduct PFA? And what are the criteria or qualities that he or she must possess to conduct PFA? And lastly po, what is the difference between neuropsychologic and neuropsychiatric examination for, for us teachers? And what test would you recommend for us to undergo? And how often are we going to undergo such tests? Thank you, Paul. Okay, I think for the first question, C.R.D. Si Jimenez would be best suited to answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Iti. Parang uh, ano ako sa daming question. <laughs> <laughs> Pinakiyaw ni ma'am. <laughs> yung, ano, yung major shifts, parang parang na, na nabalik sa akin yung shift of ways no? <laughs> kasi ko sana face to face talaga no uh, yeah. at least makita but uh, because of our situation nowadays yun yun ang pinaka challenge din no yung pinaka uh, major shift na ginawa natin that sometimes instead ng 8 hours lang tayo sa uh, trabaho doon sa office but because of this uh, um, uh, almost all na ginagawa natin is virtual even meetings will even reach to 10 o'clock in the evening or more. Kaya, true talaga yung sinabi ni Dr. Raiko, no? Na sometimes nag-overboard na. Kaya, may tanong din ako sa kay, ano eh, kay <laughs> Dr. Raiko. Kasi, pag ma maisip ko natin uh, yung uh, overboard na ako, 10 minutes, mag, uh, magkulong yeah. ako sa room, 10 yes. minutes, uh, gusto ko ako lang mag-isa. Kung correct ba yung ginawa ko na ako lang mag-isa. Yes. Kahit yes. na uh, family members, pati asawa ko, hindi yes. po ako, ako lang yes. So, I, I, I hope you will uh, enlighten me. Yun ang ginawa ko. But to answer the question, no, the first question of uh, uh, Ms. Juan, 
Now, actually, the regional office do have a wellness program. So, our uh, Education Support Services Division, uh, mayroon tayong ano doon sa ito ang uh, medical, uh, sa ito medical and dental uh, uh, office. So, ating medical doctor actually is already uh, preparing a wellness program together with our uh, our its RDD on on trainings uh, for our uh, for our division office personnel and also for our teachers so as of now actually this actually is one of the the thing that is part of our wellness program in region 7 itong ginawa natin ngayon is already part of the wellness program of region 7 that at least we will be uh, enlightened or will be uh, sort of uh, be, uh, aware of if ever we have these symptoms or might be we thought asymptomatic tayo sa mga ganito but we already uh, have something in us, no? So this is part actually of the wellness program of our uh, department, especially Region 7. And we have more. And uh, I'm sure you will be uh, informed as to all this on how you can uh, join and uh, how can you avail of the programs that we have uh, for the teachers, especially on mental health, no? mental mm -hmm. health program. So anyway, uh, GLOBE and, G, uh, and GLOBE at saka yung GFS at saka yung ano natin, nandito naman palagi sila si, si ma'am no? sa Mental Health Association of the Philippines also will be helping us. And I'm sure this is not the first, but uh, this is not the only, but this is just the first and there will be more coming uh, with the, our uh, partnership. Thank you. Thank you, R.D. Jimenez. Actually, Ma'am Siti, all other questions, I cannot answer them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> of, uh, masters in guidance and counseling, but I believe I can go out uh, uh, <laughs> answering those questions. So possibly, Doctor Raiko can answer. Okay. Those. Uh, yeah. If you will, in yes, yes. If you will indulge me, no, yung yung sa questions about PFA, I would like to uh, give the floor to Miss Isa because in mm -hmm. our uh, uh, organization, she's the one handling the um, Education Advocacy and Research Department where PFA is usually given and uh, it's her expertise actually. So Miss Isa, your questions about PFA. So, siguro before we wrap up this session, no? Yes. Uh, just to give a very brief idea. So, when we say mm -hmm. psychological first aid, it can be given by anybody. Meaning that teachers can be trained to do it. Bakit? Kasi ito yung unang response that we give uh, whenever there is someone who needs a psychosocial intervention. And so, teachers can do it. Parents can do it. So, it's just a matter of training them how, what are the basic and essential skills. So if you're interested, uh, they can just email us and ask us if, if they want uh, parang training on psychological first aid. And PMH can will gladly do it for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Ano May <laughs> time pa ba para sa ibang tanong? Baka sa comments na lang, no? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Sagot na lang natin later. Yes, uh, I think uh, that's all the time we have. Sayang kasi ang dami pa sanang pwedeng matunong, pwedeng um, ma 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 bigyan ng klaro ng mga yes. yeah, clarity ng mga, ng mga issues. But we really appreciate um, your presence here, uh, Dr. Raiko, Ms. Roland, and R.D. Jimenez. Uh, would you like to say or share some closing remarks to all of our teachers? Okay, uh, before uh, before uh, before closing, uh, Miss CT. So uh, again, no, so thank you all. Uh, actually, uh, I hope that uh, there will be another episode, mm -hmm. the next episode for this, because I know there are lots of questions and lots okay. of that uh, we need to discuss, and we need that uh, our our people in the field will be aware of. It is the awareness that uh, we need in order that uh, at least no, uh, when they will be going back to their uh, respective uh, work assignments or their tasks, uh, the baggages that they have because of this uh, pandemic will at least be uh, a possible ma, ano, ma, 
ma lessen no yung yung number kung mayroon mang maiwan so I, we cannot say that because of this activity all the problems all the issues will be addressed will be solved because i believe there is no panacea in all these things yes. so what we can do mm -hmm. is at least uh, as what you mentioned uh, uh, dr raiko that uh, uh, maybe we have more positives than negatives mm -hmm. so just it and then in closing again uh, Let's heal as one, uh, and together I know we uh, uh, together we will uh, we will work as one, so that uh, we can fight this COVID as one. Mm -hmm. And to end also, uh, we'll have this po. Actually, ang nginano ko yung uh, acronym na po. So what is P A W? So we have to pray, act, and win. So in every day uh, before go uh, before uh, mag uh, ano sa bed. So I always pray and then act on something and then I know you will win. As what uh, Dr. Raiko mentioned, be positive no? and tell yourself, I can do it and I'm good. So all the time. So once again, to, uh, to our partner, GLOBE, GFS, Inquirer, and to the Mental Health Association, again, uh, our gratefulness on behalf of our regional office, 7 DepEd. Thank you once again and God bless everyone. And to all my uh, co-panelists, uh, so congratulations and uh, God bless to all of you and to all our viewers and also those who joined us in this conversation. Thank you, Ardi Jimenez, Ms. Rolin. Would yes, like po. Um, my heart is really filled with gratitude for the opportunity po na binigay sa akin and for giving, <clears throat> excuse me, for giving this opportunity po to really share real life experiences of teachers. Actually, meron pa po sana akong maraming share, pero um, because of the time constraint, okay na rin po. I'm very happy for this opportunity and this privilege. And then um, we really assure you that we will stay true to our oath in the Department of Education to really serve our fellow men and our children in the Philippines uh, in the best of our abilities. Po. Um, this is our lifetime commitment as teachers, as educators, and this is also our passion aside from our commitment. So we just would like to urge everyone to really help the Department of Education to really support the projects and programs of the Department of Education because I believe na kahit sabihin ng kagawaran ng edukasyon na kaya nila, um, I believe mas maging mabuti or there will be a better impact or there will be a better uh, victory if all the Filipinos will help hand in hand para po sa education ng mga kabataan. So, mahirap po kasi nakalaban yung kalaban na hindi natin nakikita. Um, but we are going to work around this health crisis. So, in behalf po uh, sa lahat ng mga educators in the Philippines and around the world, let us just rally behind the programs and the projects of the Department of Education. And together as a country, let us help each other in leading this generation into a brighter and better future. So once again, salamat po sa opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rulin. Dr. Raiko, it's been a privilege. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Globe, for this opportunity. Really, we're, we're really very happy now that um, we're part of this activity to be able to share with you our organization's advocacy and uh, inquirer. Thank you also and for Preen and Noli Soli. And um, for for Region 7 specifically, you know, if you have mental health concerns or, or even um, lectures that you want to be conducted to you, I would like to uh, I would like for you to get in touch with our chapter there. You no, know? they can help you out. We have psychiatrists there who are uh, available you know, for uh, either for mental health services or for psychoeducation activities. PMHA Cebu chapter and PMHA Dumaguete chapter. Probably we can share with you the the contact details later on. And I think uh, one very important um, uh, 
thing no, that, that we saw in this afternoon's activities that no agency can really do it alone. So it's uh, the, the partnership, it's very heartwarming to know that we're all working together, Department of Education, you know, um, Philippine Mental Health Association, and of course, the full support of, of uh, Globe and uh, Inquirer and all of your other partners. So thank you, thank you very much. And I hope this, is will not, this will not be the last time that we will do this together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Siti. It's nice working with you. Thank, thank you so much once again. Uh, those are our esteemed panelists from Philippine Mental Health Association and DepEd Region 7. And uh, I really learned a lot today um, sharing some mga experiences ninyo and, and echoing actually what uh, Dr. Raiko uh, mentioned earlier that it's okay to not feel normal in this abnormal time. Yes. I think uh, it's really important to 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 re-stress that. What about you, Aisa? What, what, ano yung parang nag, pinaka nag-stand out sa'yo sa discussion so, natin today? Um, I think yung toxic productivity kasi ang nandaming naka-work from home ngayon, hindi lang yung mga teachers natin. So, there has to really be a balance between uh, work and your actual life. So, I think yun yung takeaway ko after this uh, series or webinar. Ang galing din nung ano, no, setting boundaries, the importance yes, of it. No. Protecting your time. This is your time for work. This is your time yes. for yourself. Ang galing, ang, ang daming mga tips sa binigay ni Dr. Raiko kanina. Talagang very helpful. Um, not only for educators, but uh, especially for everyone right now. Kasi mm -hmm. lahat naman tayo, we are under um, mental stress. Um, once again, thank you everyone for being a part of Inclusive, the Inquirer webinar series produced by the Philippine Daily Inquirer, Inquirer.net, Crean and Nolly Solly, and co-presented by Globe. You may view a recording of today's webinar on this Facebook page and also stay tuned for updates on the next legs of this mental health webinar series. Again, we encourage you to please join the Hope Bank community here on Facebook and share messages of hope using the hashtag start a new day. Okay, to our viewers, thank you once again for joining us. We will be bringing you more conversations about mental health in the next episode of Globe and Inquirer's hashtag Start a New Day webinar series. So once again, this is Aisa de la Cruz. And this is Satina Varro Ramirez. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to hashtag Start a New Day. Let's talk about mental health, a forum for educators. Please stay safe. And here's a final word from Globe. Thank you. Ate? Napatawa mo ko?